Mr. Teru. Okay, today we are going to be solving polynomial inequalities. Now most of these polynomials are going to be quadratic polynomials. So you'll see a lot of things that look familiar like factoring and the quadratic formula. But there's one extra step that we're going to have to take a look at. So if you want to solve a polynomial inequality, the first thing you're going to have to do is set the polynomial equal to zero. If you have a squared term and a single degree term, you're not going to just get that variable alone. You've got to get that equation equal to zero and then factor to use the quadratic. Or if it's a higher order equation, uh, you might be doing some synthetic division or factoring by grouping. You want to solve it for zero. Uh, these values in an equation are your x-intercepts, your real solutions. But with inequalities, these uh, values that you get, you want to, I kind of want to call them solutions, but they're critical values that you're going to use to mark up the number line into intervals. And then, so like if you have two solutions, there's going to be three intervals in the number line. And then you're going to pick a number. This is where the extra inequality work comes in. You're going to pick a number out of each interval and substitute it back into the original inequality, or maybe one that you fiddled with just a tiny bit, um, to, determine if the, um, to determine the final answer uh, to your inequality. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, we're going to start off with 2x squared minus x minus 28 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, this quadratic equation has a leading coefficient that's not 1, and the last constant is a rather large number with a lot of different factors to it. 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 4 and 7. So you could be doing trial and error a lot on your factoring. So let's remember that if you would like to uh, more easily do your factoring, you're going to take your first and last term and multiply them together. 2 times negative 28 is going to be negative. 56, and then you're looking for factors of negative 56 that add to this middle term of negative 1. Well, that is going to be negative 8 times 7. So negative 8 times 7 does give us, or, or they are factors of negative 56 that we got from doing the leading coefficient times the constant, and more importantly, they add to the middle term of negative 1. So I'm going to use these two terms to rewrite this polynomial this quadratic. And so we get 2x squared minus 8x plus 7x minus 28 is greater than or equal to 0. And we're going to now factor by grouping now that we've made this quadratic look different. Just look different. Negative 8 and 7 is still negative 1. What comes out of these two terms in the first, these two first terms? They both share a 2 and they both share an x. So we can take out 2x and 2x squared divided by 2x is 1x. And negative 8x divided by 2x is negative 4. Now I need this x minus 4 to show up again in the other grouping. So what can I take out of 7x minus 28 and get x minus 4 to show up again? Well, that's going to be positive 7. So I'm going to take out a positive 7. 7 divided by 7 is 1x. 28 divided by 7 is negative 4. And now we have the same factor show up twice. The x minus 4 is in both of these terms, so we're going to pull it out again and get x minus 4 times 2x plus 7 is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if this were an equation, we'd be very close to our final answer. Um, we would just set this equal to 0, this equal to 0, and if one of these equals to 0, the entire equation is equal to zero, but this is just an inequality. See, for these two numbers to multiply together to give us a number bigger than zero, um, they either need to be both positive or both um, negative. So we can't just say, well, I do have to do this step. x minus 4 equals zero, and 2x uh, plus 7 equals zero. So my solutions are going to be, or actually not my solutions, but my critical values are going to be x is 4 and after I subtract both sides by 7 and divide both sides by 2, I'll have x is equal to negative 3.5. That would be done if this were an equation, but it's an inequality. So what I have to do now is use those critical values to break up the number line 
in two intervals. And I'm going to have to race these directions to finish my example here. So make sure you stop the tape and uh, or stop stop the video and uh, copy those down. I just showed my age. Stop the tape. Negative three point five and four. So the last thing here says again, pick a number out of each interval. Well, we have one, two, and three intervals, and see which intervals work to keep this quadratic greater than or equal to zero. Stop the tape on YouTube. <laughs> okay, so let's say, let's uh, do the check in a different color. So we're going to look at uh, anything less than negative 3.5 will be fine. So let's say negative 4. Anything between negative 3.5 and 4, like 0, will be fine. And anything bigger than 4 will work, let's say 5. So I'm going to plug each of these numbers, one number for each of the three intervals, back into the original equation, inequality. The ones that work, work, and the ones that don't, that's not part of the answer. So we're going to have 2 times negative 4 squared minus negative 4 minus 28, and we're going to make sure that that's greater than or equal to 0. So that's going to be 2 times 16 plus 4 minus 28 is greater than or equal to 0. Well, that's 32 plus 4 minus 28, and I do believe that that's going to work. So this, this number 4, negative 4 in this uh, section of the number line works, so that interval is okay. Now let's try 0. 2 times 0 squared minus 0 minus 28 is greater than or equal to 0. Um, well, 0, 0, and negative 28 negative 28 is not greater than 0. So when I tried a number in this second interval, it failed. So that's not going to be part of my final answer. And then finally, let's try 5. So 2 times 5 squared minus 5 minus 28 is greater than or equal to 0. That's 2 times 25 because 5 squared is 25, minus, tw uh, minus 5, minus 28, greater than or equal to 0. Well, that's 50, minus 5 is 45, and minus 28 is definitely going to be a positive answer. So that inequality works as well. So my final answer for what makes this equation not only equal to 0, what makes it equal to 0 is 4 and negative 3.5, but what also makes it positive. These two areas of the number line make it positive, so my final answer is going to be x has to be less than or equal to, from the equal sign here, negative 3.5, or x has to be greater than or equal to 4. In interval notation, that's going to look like negative infinity up to negative 3.5 with the square bracket because of the equal sign. Or, again, picking up at 4, we can use it because 4 makes us equal to 0 up to infinity. BAM! Example number 1. Let's see if we can get another one done before my time's out. Okay. Alrighty then, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at this example. x cubed minus x squared minus 4x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, this is a third degree, and to solve third degrees, either they need to be a nice, easy peasy factor by grouping, or you need to work with synthetic division to finish that up. Now this will factor by grouping like you just saw me do a second ago. x squared will come out of these two terms and leave you with x minus 1. These two per terms both have a 4, but I need x minus 1 to show up, so I'm going to take out negative 4 because it's plus a constant and this has a minus a constant. So take out a negative 4. 
Now I've got two terms that both have an x minus 1, so I'm going to factor that out. x minus 1 times x squared minus 4. And this is a difference of squares, so this is actually factorable again. So now we have x minus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 2, the difference of squares pattern, is greater than 0. And my critical values on my number line are going to be x equals 1, negative 2, and positive 2. And again, if this were an equation, we would be done, but it's not. So <clears throat> we're going to have these values on the number line. So negative 2, positive 1, positive 2, and I'm going to have to check out a number in this interval, say, I don't know, negative 3. Let's try a number between negative 2 and 1, like 0. Uh, we're going to have to plug in a number that's a decimal, so maybe 1.5, and then a number that's bigger than 2, like 3. Let's see which ones work. So back up to this one, so we have negative 3 cubed minus negative 3 squared minus 4 times negative 3 plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Well, that's going to be 20, uh, negative 27 minus 9 plus 12 plus 4 is greater than uh, 0. That's going to be negative 36 plus 12 plus 4. And I don't think that's going to come out to be greater than 0. So this section does not pass the test. Let's try 0. Well, that's going to be easy. 0, 0, 0, plus 4, greater than 0. So if I plug in 0, I'm going to have 0 minus 0 minus 0 plus 4 is greater than 0. Well, that's going to be pretty nice, right? Um, 4 is greater than 0. So this section does work out. And now I'm kind of pausing because I'm realizing I don't have to work on a decimal here, and I don't have a calculator. All right, uh, <laughs> let's take a look at 1.5. So 1.5 cubed minus 1.5 squared minus 4 times 1.5 plus 4 is greater than 0. Well, that's going to be 1.5 raised to the third is 3.375. Minus 1.5, I believe that is but don't want to make a mistake on the internet, 2.25 minus, that's going to be 4 and a half, so minus 6 plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Well, this is going to be just a hair over 1, and this is going to be negative 2. So this is going to be a negative number is greater than 0, and that is false. So this part doesn't work. And i got two minutes left to finish this up. So let's take a look at the value of 3. And we've got 3 cubed is 27. 3, 9, 27. 3 squared is 9. 4 times 3 is negative 12, plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. So this is going to be what? 16, 18. Minus 12 plus 4 is greater than 0. That's going to be positive. This is still positive, so that works out. And my last interval works. So my final answer is going to be x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than 1, or x can be greater than 2. And I'm out of time, and thank you very much. Woo! Solving polynomial inequalities.